So every video up until this point has been over radicals. And so we're going to kind of switch gears for a moment and we're going to work on rational exponents. Now your question might be is why is this video in this section when everything else has already been over radicals? And just be patient with me because we're going to go ahead and see that very quick. But since this is not in the exponent section, I feel the need to review exponents just a little bit before we move on to rational exponents. So what we've done before is integer exponents, where all of the exponents have been whole numbers. And we know that anything such as this here, a to the nth power, is a times itself n times. And so when our exponent or our power is a whole number, that makes sense because we know we can take it that many times. Now, if our exponent is negative, we know that we just take that as the reciprocal of the fraction. And we know if our exponent is zero, that that's going to simplify to be one. So we know how to deal with exponents when they're positive whole numbers, when they're negative whole numbers, and even when they're zero, but how do we deal with it when they are rational? And hopefully you remember that the word rational has the prefix ratio, and so pretty much any time we see this, we know that that means we are going to have fractions involved. So you see my example here. Now we have rational exponents where my exponents are in fact fractions. Now by definition, this means we need to take a times itself, right, m over n times, but that just doesn't make any sense. So how do we actually do this? Well, the property says that if you have a fraction in the exponent, you can actually rewrite that as a radical. And now you see why this video is in the radical section. So the denominator of your exponent, in this case n, becomes the root that you have, so an nth root, and the numerator of your exponent stays as the power. So this is the nth root of a to the nth power. Now, it doesn't matter whether you do the nth root first or the nth power first. So I can write it like I see it here. And in this fashion, I would simplify my inside exponent first before I would take the nth root, or I can reverse it. I can actually take the nth root first and then the nth power last. And sometimes it might be easier to do it this way, and sometimes it might be easier to do it that way. Just note that both of them are perfectly acceptable. Okay, so most of the examples in this video are just going to be converting back and forth between rational exponents, where we have fractions in the exponent, and roots, or radical notation, so an nth root of something. And so let's go ahead and see what the examples consist of. My first set of examples, the instructions say to convert to radical notation and if possible, simplify. I have the property listed up here for you on the right if you need to keep it as a refresher in your mind. So example number one, x to the three-fourths. Remember what the denominator is, that converts to the root, and then x to the third power stays. Now again, I can write it like this, or I can write it as the root first and the power last, whichever one. I'm probably just going to rewrite it like this most of the time because it's a little bit simpler. It saves me a set of parentheses, but just note that the other one is acceptable as well. Okay, in example two, I need to do the same thing, but before I actually deal with the five-thirds power, I need to deal with the negative involved. So if we go back to our exponents, we know that the negative exponent changes it into the other side of the fraction. So this becomes 1 over 8 to the 5 thirds. And now I know I can rewrite that as root notation, which is the third root of 8 to the fifth power. And now what we need to do is we need to simplify this root. And I can take to the fifth power first if I wanted to but I don't know what eight to the fifth power is off the top of my head. So I'm gonna take the cube root of eight, and I know that simplifies to be two. So that's one over two to the fifth power. And now two to the fifth power gives me 32. So my final most simplified answer to example two is one over 32. Example three, I have negative 32 to the two fifths power. 
Well, let me go ahead and rewrite this. This becomes the fifth root of negative 32 squared. Make sure I keep the parentheses around the negative 32 because my exponent does go to all of it. And this is where it comes into play. Do I want to take the fifth root first or do I want to take the squared power first? Either one of them are okay, but I want to do whichever one I can do in my head first. If I had to square negative 32, I'd probably have to punch that into the calculator. So my first step is going to be the fifth root of negative 32, and then my last step is going to be taking it to the square power. I know the fifth root of negative 32 simplifies to be negative 2, and then I can square that, and I know negative 2 squared comes out to be positive 4. So if I simplify that, I get the whole number of 4. I have a couple more examples of these, but these happen to be all whole numbers and no variables involved. And so we're going to be able to hopefully simplify these here. I suggest that you pause the video and see if you can work these out on your own. Okay, so my first one is negative 1,000 to the one-third. So that becomes the cubed root of negative 1,000 to the first power. Now, I don't really need this first power, so I might as well go ahead and get rid of it. That doesn't do me any good. I don't need to do anything to simplify it. And I know the cube root of negative 1,000 simplifies to be negative 10, because if I took negative 10 times itself three times, that would give me negative 1,000. So there's my answer there. Two is a fraction, but no big deal. This one-half power simplifies to the square root of 64 over 121. Again, I could put this to the first power, but I don't need that, so I might as well leave this off. Technically, when we write square roots, we don't write the 2 there, so this is just like it is right here, the square root of 64 over 121. I can take the square root of each of those individually, so my final answer gives me 8 over 11. Number 3 is the fourth root of negative 81. And I know that my negative goes under the square root because that's what these parentheses tell me here. And at this point, you should know that this is not simplifiable because I cannot take an even root of a negative number. So this one is undefined or not simplifiable or whatever terminology you need to use at that time. Number four might look the exact same thing, but this negative actually is not taken to the one-fourth power. And to help emphasize that, I can rewrite it like this. So this is like the negative, the fourth root of 81. So my negative just transfers from step to step, and the fourth root of 81 gives me three. And so the answer to that one is negative 3. Okay, so again, I was converting from rational exponents or fractions in the exponents to radicals and then simplifying. Here we're going to do it in the opposite fashion. They gave us roots or radicals, and what we want to do is we want to rewrite it in rational exponent format. So in my first example here, I have the sixth root of x to the third power. Remember, whatever my root is, that goes in the denominator of my fraction. So my third stays in the numerator. And of course, we always want to simplify if we can. x to the 3, 6 simplifies to x to the 1 half. And there we go. I suggest that you pause the video and see if you can convert example 2 on your own. Okay, so I have 7xy all to the fifth power, and you need to make sure to keep it all to the fifth power because that's what those parentheses are there for. And then that is all to the fourth root, so all to the 5 over 4. The key part of this one here is keeping the parentheses in there because all of it goes to the 5 fourth power. If you left off the parentheses and you just wrote it like this, then technically that would only be the y to the 5 fourth power. So you need to keep the parentheses in there in this problem here. 
All right, a little bit more complicated, okay? So what we need to do is we need to simplify, and then, if it's appropriate, write it in radical notation. So this is basically using those exponent properties that we learned in a previous section. So we know in example one, if I have two bases that are multiplied, the property says that I can add my exponents. So this becomes x to the 5 6 plus 2 thirds. And now I need to come up with a common denominator, which happens to be 6. So I multiply this one by 2 over 2. So this is x to the 5 over 6 plus 4 over 6. So this simplifies to be x to the 9 over 6. Reduce my fraction. This gives me x is 3 over 2. So this becomes less about converting back and forth using the property up here, but using all of those exponent properties that we learned back in the exponent section, as well as using the fraction information that we learned way back before. Okay, example two. What well, we need to do here is we need to take this one step at a time. So let me start with the inside. So I'm gonna keep my cube root on the outside and I'm going to rewrite this as an exponent notation using this up here. Remember, if there is no root denoted, we assume it to be a square root. If there is no power denoted, we assume it to be to the first power. So I can rewrite that root as 7 to the 1 half power. I'm going to do the same thing now with this cube root out here. So my 7 to the 1 half power stays, and I rewrite my root there. So I have 7 to the 1 third power because I can keep this as one unit to the first power and then my root goes in the denominator. Now again, it goes back to those exponent properties. When I have a power to a power, I multiply. And when I multiply, I multiply these straight across. So 7 to the 1 6. Now, I shouldn't have boxed this answer back up here because my final thing said to write it in radical notation. So both of these from here, I need to rewrite back in radical notation. So this becomes the square root of x to the third power in example one. And this becomes the sixth root of seven to the first power, which I'll leave off in example two. So you can see that I can simplify them, and then my very last step is to convert them back to radical notation. Let's look at a few more examples of these. And again, our way to simplify these is more of using the exponent properties that we learned in a previous section and less of converting it back and forth. I suggest that you pause the video and see if you can simplify these all on your own. Okay, so in example one, basically I just need to add the exponents in the numerator and subtract the exponent in the denominator. So this becomes x to the 6 over 7 over x to the 1 7. And then if I subtract, that becomes x to the 5 7. Now these don't say to convert back to radical notation, so that's going to be my final answer there. In problem number two, I need to take all of this to the two-thirds power. So maybe you want to distribute that two-thirds power first, and that's perfectly fine. What I'm going to do as my first step is to get rid of my negative exponent. You know how I always suggest to do that. So let me just rewrite this as 8 times y to the 3 fourths in the numerator, x squared in the denominator, now to the two-thirds power. Now let me distribute this. So in my y to the 3 fourths times 2 thirds, I multiply those, making sure I reduce first. So that becomes y to the 1 half power. In my denominator, I again multiply x2 to the 2 thirds, which gives me x to the 4 thirds. Now what about 8 to the 2 thirds? Well, this is maybe where I need to convert it into rad radical notation to see how it simplifies. So that would be cube root of 8 squared. Either way I do it, it's going to be pretty easy. So let me do the cube root first, which is 2, and then when I square it, that gives me 4. So this simplifies as 4y to the 1 half, x to the 4 thirds. 
Okay, example three. It's definitely the most difficult one, but again, just take it step by step, and it shouldn't be a big deal. All right, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to distribute my exponents all the way through. So 5 squared is 25. C to the 3, 4 times 2 gives me 3 over 2 if I reduce first. D to the 1 half times 2 gives me just D to the first power. And then over there, D to the 5 thirds times 3, my 3's cancel out, is D to the 5. 2 to the 3rd simplifies to be 8. And then C to the 3 halves. Okay. So I'm going to multiply these fractions, and we know the correct way to multiply them is to reduce first. So let me see what I can reduce. My C to the 3 halves over my C to the 3 halves cancels out. D to the 5th over D to the 1st power. I know I subtract those powers, so that gives me D to the 4th power. And then my 25 over 8, I cannot reduce, so that just gives me 25 D to the 4th power over 8. And there I have my final answer to example 3. So we see that it wasn't so bad after all. All right, so we are finished up with rational exponents, and we see why it's in the radical section, because that's how we convert it back and forth, and that's how we simplify it along the way.